I remember, a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, there was a movie called The Phantom Menace. To tell you the truth, I spit on the movie. Acts by those standards, special effects. I watched the movie in the theatre and all this cut my eyes very much. Frankly childish plot. I understand that Lucas wanted to show the whole history of Anakin, starting from his childhood, but still. The movie turned out to be frankly childish. But in general, the main reason for Heath was that Lucas introduced the theory of midichlorians, which are in every organism, and their quantity determines how much a person can interact with the Force. So let's talk about that. To begin with, why did this very Heath start? Simply because after watching the original trilogy, everyone thought the Force was something mystical, something magical, something we don't know what it is, but it looks cool. And when Lucas tried to give some sort of scientific explanation, they immediately started saying that, we don't need that, bring it all back. But were there really reasons for such hatred of the midichlorians' idea? My opinion is that there weren't. Let's go back to the original trilogy for a moment and look at what is known about the Jedi there. In fact, almost nothing. Palpatine made sure of that. In addition, the Order itself was initially surrounded by such a veil of mystery, and they did not reveal much about their secrets and secrets. For many people in the galaxy, all these manipulations with the Force seemed to be something mysterious, magical, and so on. So the fact that most people outside the Order knew almost nothing about the Force was normal. Remember exactly what Obi-Wan said to Luke when he told him about the Jedi? That gifted people were thought of as everything but sorcerers, charlatans, and so on. And I'm sure that was the case not only before the locals started flying into space, but also much later. Because the high level of technology and civilization does not cancel all kinds of superstitions. So, the whole original trilogy in those moments, where the Force and other things appear at all, shows us it from the point of view of a common man. Even if you look at it through Luke's eyes, it's just the practice that was explained to him. Not how it works, but what you have to do to do it. How long does a full-fledged Jedi training last? Up to about sixteen or so, right? And that's just for a reasonable person to fully learn how to use all their abilities. And Luke was essentially being trained to be a practitioner who just had to defeat Vader. He would do it, and then, as luck would have it. Well, we already know the rest. As for the prequels, it's different. They show us, among other things, the life inside the Order. And this is where the most interesting part begins. As you know, the Order teaches. Teaches from a very young age. Teaches all the techniques of the Force. Teaches you what you need to know to use them properly. Basically, they're taught theory in addition to practice. Which tells us what? It tells us that the Jedi study the Force. And they've been doing it, I understand, for quite some time. How long from the events of KOTOR to the Battle of Yavin? And in KOTOR they already knew what the Force was and how to work with it. So they've been studying the Force for a long time. And they definitely could somehow determine the levels of giftedness of each individual mind. And here we can already start talking about those midichlorians. For starters, as I said, this idea gave an element of scientificity to everything that had to do with the Force. Was that a good thing or a bad thing? In my opinion, good. Why? Because with the element of scientificity, the whole universe became more plausible. At the same time, the idea of midichlorians itself did not affect anything. Well, there are them, so what? Yeah, it could have been mentioned a couple times in two or three books, and that's it. In fact, there weren't that many books about unlings. At least I tried reading about little Obi-Wan, and realized it was very much not my thing. The only interesting idea from there was the force levels, and the fact that the weakest ones were sent to agricultural work, to sprout grains with the help of the force. By the way, the work itself is important, I think, but every boy, as you know, dreams of feats and things like that, so it's logical that the boy didn't like this future much. But how do they even determine force levels? How do they even realize that this boy should be taken into the order, and that one over there? Don't. I mean, a test would tell them everything. Someone will immediately say that, but after all, midichlorians are only in the blood, and everyone's blood is different, and so on. But let's go further. Because midichlorians can live not only in the blood, they can live all over the body. They can be such universal symbiotics, which, being created by the Force, 
can feel quite well in the organism of any living being in the galaxy. Thus, as I think, the idea with midichlorians could be used further, simply because it was interesting, added some pseudoscientific to the universe and just looked good. But there's a nuance here. Alas, but those who thought there, and it was not only me, for all the time that I was fond of the expanded universe, there were many of them, were extremely educated people. It was clear and interesting to us. But if you look at the general mass of Star Wars fans, it turns out that such people are a minority. The rest were more interested in watching a magical fairy tale. And it's clear that they didn't like the idea of midichlorians very much. It was too complicated for them. Why explain it all if magic sounds more interesting? Actually, the same people then enjoyed watching Rey, Kylo, and other Disney characters. But I'm not going to talk about them. It's clear that there was nothing good in all this anymore.